With that, we'll take our Bibles and turn to the book of Matthew in chapter number 27. We're going to read verses 11 through 26. The title of today's message is Caught by Culture. Caught by Culture. This week I was listening to one of the daily podcasts that I listened to, and it was Pray the Word with David Platt. Every day at the, uh, at the end of his uh, daily prayer, he mentions a group of people around the world which is known as an unreached people group. That means that there are people around the world that have never heard the gospel. And when he was mentioning these people, he mentioned in his prayer that there are now people in hell begging for someone to go to their family on earth to share the gospel with them. So think about that. There are people around the world who are caught by the culture in which they live. The gospel has never made it to their shores. Or the government has outlawed the presence of the gospel in their country. And so therefore, their hope of receiving Jesus, there is none. There is no hope for these people to be saved if, they, if the gospel is never presented to them. So their culture excludes them from hearing the gospel. This caused me to think about Pilate. Pilate, I've been studying Pilate to prepare for this message, and, and I dug deep into the life and character of Pilate. Pilate is also a man who is caught by culture. He's caught in a culture which is very religious. It's polytheistic. They worship many gods, but they don't know the one true God. He is caught in a culture where also grabbing power seems to equal success. It's a culture that is full of hedonism, the pursuit of pleasure, and self sensual self-indulgence. Yet it has no idea of the real uh, pleasure, such as the peace that passes all understanding. Pilate, even if you think about Pilate, and I'm sure maybe you've even read about Pilate before, and maybe you haven't even thought about him and his life and his character and the circumstances that, in which he found himself. But Pilate is also, not only is he caught in, his, caught, caught in the culture in which he lives, but he's caught in the clash between two cultures his Roman culture, and the culture of the Jews. And in this situation, when Jesus is brought to him, he's going to make decisions based upon this clash of cultures. And because he's making these decisions based upon these cultural influences, it leads him down a dark path. And today I wonder how many of us, how many hearing this sermon might be caught, caught by culture too. In other words, the pressures of culture are forming your thoughts about how you see Jesus and what will you do with him. Let's read Matthew 27, 11. And Jesus stood before the governor and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and the elders, he answered nothing. Then said Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him, Never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at the feast, now at the feast, the governor was wont to release unto the people a prisoner whom they found. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will you that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called Christ? For he knew that for envy they had delivered him. And when he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with it, that just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas and destroy Jesus. And the governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will you that I release unto you? They said, Barabbas. 
Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be on us and our children. Then released he, then he, then released he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Let's pray. What ominous words, Lord, were spoken by the Jews that day when they said, his blood be upon us. What a situation Pilate finds himself in. A clash of cultures. Lord, as we look at our world today, we recognize there's a clash going on between good and evil, between Christ and the wickedness that is in this world. We pray, God, that as we dig into your word, that your Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts, encourage us to stand firm in the faith. And if we are being manipulated by culture, I pray that you would reveal that to us so that we won't be caught by culture and its influences. Help us to honor you in your word today. We pray for the power of Jesus to be present in the preaching of your word. It's in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The first thing I want to think about is we have Jesus here. He's delivered unto Pilate. And I want us to think about Jesus being despised and rejected of men. I had Brother Jim read Isaiah 53 today because that is the gospel in the Old Testament. And it tells us about uh, Jesus. And it, and it said these words. He's despised and rejected of men in, in Isaiah 53 and verse number 3. And so we think about how is Jesus despised? Well, first of all, he's despised by the Jews because Jesus did not match their expectations. They were looking for a warrior king. They were looking for someone to deliver them from Roman occupation. And Jesus would not do that. He wasn't here to deliver them from the Roman kingdom yet. That'll be in the future when he comes and delivers his people. But he wasn't here to do that yet. And so the Jews despised him and rejected him because of that. He's also despised and rejected of Pilate because as you look at this, we see a man who is torn. He's a man who only wants a civil peace. He doesn't want there to be an uprising. He doesn't want to have to give answer to what's going on under his uh, rule to, uh, to Tiberius, uh, Caesar. He, he just wants there to be Civil peace, the uprising of the people, was a threat to his authority. And so he has no choice but to keep the people calm. And so he crucifies an innocent man. And so we do want to remember this also about Pilate, is that Pilate wants to release Jesus. He doesn't want to crucify him. He, he looks at him and says, there's nothing wrong. He's done no evil. I can find no fault in him. He wants to release him. There is, there is no doubt as we read the account, and if you read all of the gospel accounts of Jesus before Pilate, you see that Pilate says, well, I find no fault in Jesus, and he wants to let him go. John 19, 4, Pilate says this, I bring him forth to you that you may know that I find no fault in him. But the people uh, rebelled against that, and they, they, they vehemently, they, they acted out against uh, Pilate's words. And so uh, he claimed to be, uh, they said he claims to be a king, a king. And so he, Pilate recognizes that's a threat to Caesar. And so John 19, 8 says, when Pilate therefore heard the saying, he was the more afraid. So Pilate is afraid of Jesus. He's afraid of the people. He's afraid of Caesar. And he wants to let Jesus go. I mean, he really just, why won't this just all go away? I don't want to deal with this today. This is not my problem. This is your problem but he's caught. He's caught in circumstances. And he even tries to take matters in his own hands and he's going to scourge Jesus. And his hope was that by scourging Jesus, that that would appease the Jewish mob and that that would allow him. If I, listen, if I go and beat him and, and scourge him severely, then maybe that'll satisfy the Jews and they'll let me let him go. We know the fact is that he didn't, but we also know this, that 
He's the Roman procurator in Judea. He has the power to say, you Jews, go home. I'm going to let Jesus go. He had the power to release Jesus. He could have done what he wanted to do. He is the supreme ruler in that area. But his control of the area, over the area, was tenuous. And he was at a risk to lose the people and to lose his position. So he's caught in these circumstances. I also want us to think about Pilate as a, and his character. The two other characters besides Jesus in this are Pilate and Barabbas. I want to discuss them for just a few minutes for us to get some background information on them. Pilate, of course, as I've already mentioned, is a Roman pure curator. He was the supreme authority in Judea at the time, and his offices were actually located in Caesarea. But he comes down to Jerusalem because it was the practice to go down to Jerusalem to take his 3,000 soldiers that he had and to make sure that there was no uprising, just sort of kind of keep the peace. And But he was a man by the name of Pilate because... Of his, that was a name that was given to one who was been set free from slavery. So, someone in his family in the past had been a slave. He possibly was not a freeborn citizen of Rome. And so, because he was the son or the grandson of someone who was a freed slave, you know, he wasn't very comfortable in his position because he wasn't freeborn as a Roman citizen and he felt threatened um, as his time as the Roman pure procurator. And so he was uncomfortable in his position because of his upbringing. Also, Pilate's actions as the Roman procurator had uh, brought instability among the Jews. Now, you find these facts. You don't find these facts in the scripture. You find these facts from history. But they're proven history and Jewish historians like Josephus and some other histories. But, but the first action that, uh, that Pilate did to stir up the emotions of the, of the people of, in, in Jerusalem was that he sent his soldiers from Caesarea down to Jerusalem. And he was going to encamp them there. And they took with them the standards which had on had on them the emblem of Caesar. And so they brought the emblem of Caesar into the city of Jerusalem. And the Jews are like, we can't have this emblem of Caesar in Jerusalem. We can't worship any other God but God. And you can't have any other images of any other God. So you've got to get these, <laughs> these standards of, of Caesar out. And so they sent some Jews up to Caesarea to protest. And see, uh, Pilate wouldn't listen to them. And so Pilate sent some soldiers in amongst the people and began to murder the people that were protesting. The people wouldn't cease protesting. And after five days, Pilate capitulated and he brought the soldiers home from Jerusalem. So that was the first action that Pilate made to, to cause an uproar. Second of all, you know when Jesus talks about the blood of the Galileans mingled with their sacrifices, apparently near the temple as some Galileans were going to make some sacrifices, Pilate had put them to death also. Um, no reason for that is given, but um, he mingled the blood, their own blood with their sacrifices. Thirdly, Pilate made the decision to take some of the Corban money, which was the temple redemption vow, the money that was given into the temple for the people to be redeemed. Pilate taxed that money and took some of that money to build an aqueduct um, many miles long into the city of Jerusalem. And so that angered the Jews also, and they, uh, they, they rebelled against that. And there was an uprising because of that, because Pilate was taking the money that was to go into the temple and he was going to use it to build infrastructure. And what did he do when the people up was, uh, was rebelling against him? Again, he sent soldiers into their mix disguised as just normal citizens, but they had hidden daggers and they began to murder the Jews. Once again, you see Pilate causing an uproar amongst the people. And in my studies, I found out that it is not improbable that Barabbas was the one who led the insurrection. 
against the building of this aqueduct. That the murderous actions that, uh, that were committed were led by Barabbas. That explains their eagerness, the Jews' eagerness, to release Barabbas instead of Jesus. Because Barabbas was the leader they were looking for. They were looking for someone that would lead them against the Roman government. And Barabbas apparently did that. But Jesus is meek and lowly. His kingdom is not of this world. And he's not going to lead them against the Roman government. And so they want Barabbas. And so this is the reason, because of these uprisings that have been amongst the Jews in the past, and Pilate's actions has caused them, and no doubt the word had got back to Rome, that listen, something's going on down in Judea, and we don't think Pilate is the man to take control there in Jerusalem. You might need to replace him. And so Pilate is sensitive to the demands of the Jews. He's afraid that he's about to be called to Rome to give account for his actions. <clears throat> And history tells us that's exactly what happened. Later on, after the death of Jesus, there was an uprising amongst the Samaritans when one of the Samaritans' leaders told the Samaritans, I'm going to take you to Mount Gerizim to show you the uh, hidden treasures of Moses. And the Samaritans rebelled against Pilate. And again, Pilate had them wiped out and he was accused by, by Tellus, chief governor of Syria, and he's sent to Rome. Pilate has to go to Rome, and he has to give answers for his actions before Caesar, and he was removed from his position as Roman procurator. And later, he commits suicide. That comes from Josephus. So knowing these facts about Pilate help us to understand his decisions that he made during the time of the trial of Jesus. Pilate, as I've already mentioned, is at the Jerusalem at the time of the feast to guard against an uprising. Pilate was a man to whom political success was the breath of life. Pilate was a man who was full of anxiety about giving offense to Caesar, to Caesar, and he desired to avoid offending Caesar. He possessed a selfish regard for his own security. And Fawcett says this, Pilate is a striking instance of the danger of trifling with conscientious convictions and not acting at once upon the principle of plain duty. And so it's evident that we can see why Pilate was torn between these circumstances. He believes in his heart that Jesus is innocent. Yet he claimed that, that yet the Jews claim that if he releases Jesus, he is no friend of Caesar. And so Pilate is caught by culture. What will he do? Barabbas, also a main character here. He is, his name Barabbas, Bar meaning son of, Barabbas or Bar Abba. That word Abba was the uh, it was a rabbinic title, and so Barabbas was a, a son of one of the rabbis, one of the Jewish leaders. And we've mentioned he is the one that was, who led, or suspected to be the one who led the insurrection uh, when Pilate taxed the Corbin money. And Pilate was the man whom the Jews sought, or Barabbas was the man that the Jews sought to deliver them from Roman oppression. He was willing to fight. But the Jews are caught by culture. They're expecting a warrior king. And Jesus is not him. So this can't be the promised Messiah. This can't be the son of David. This can't be him. It can't be Jesus. So their preconceived ideas about who the Messiah would be, they were caught by their culture. <coughs> the common people, the common Jews, earlier they had said, Blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the son of David. Blessed is him who comes in the name of the Lord. So, so they had received Jesus, but now the chief priests and the elders are saying, no, we can't have Jesus. He's not the Messiah. We want Barabbas. And so they're manipulated. The common Jews are manipulated by the chief priests and the Jews. They're caught in the culture also. They're just, they're just members of the church. We just want to go to church. We just want to offer our sacrifices. We just want to have the hope of heaven. 
We don't want to have to make these decisions, but they're caught in the culture and they're being persuaded by the chief priests and they're going to cry out, crucify him. Even though earlier they had said, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And so you see how these cultural influences are playing such a part in this, these circumstances. When Jesus is brought before Pilate, those cultural influences are evident. The first thing we see, the Jews had to bring Jesus before Pilate because they did not have the power of execution. John 18, 31 says, Then Pilate said unto them, Take you him and judge him according to your law. Therefore, the Jews therefore said unto him, It is not lawful for us to put a man to death. If the Jews were going to put Jesus to death, the, the means of uh, capital punishment for the Jews was by stoning. But they didn't have the ability to stone because the Romans wouldn't allow them to execute. And so the Romans are going to be the ones who are going to have to execute him because their chosen means of execution is by crucifixion. And we know that's going to be the chosen means because Psalm 22 says they pierced my hands and my feet. And if the Jews put him to death, that wouldn't be the means of death, but it's going to be the Romans. Second, this entire discussion with Pilate will be influenced by culture. The struggle in the, part, the heart of uh, Pilate is going to be evident. And so we get to the interview of Pilate by, by or of, of Jesus by Pilate and in verse number 11, he says, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, Thou saith it. Are you the king of the Jews? You? The king of the Jews? You've been beaten. You've been spat upon. You've been made fun of. And you're the king of the Jews? Really? Jesus said, You're the one that says it. And when Pilate says, I find no fault in him, the Jews, it tells us in Luke 23, 5, they come more fierce in their accusations. But even in the face of their accusations, Jesus doesn't mention a word. Verse 12 says, and when he was accused of the chief priests and the elders, he answered nothing. The reason was he knew. He, anything he said was not going to change the mind of the chief priests and the elders. They were out for blood and they were going to have blood no matter what. No matter what Jesus said, it was not going to change their minds. Mark 15, 5 says, but Jesus answered nothing. And Jesus, the way he did not respond to uh, the Jews, it says, so that Pilate marveled. Pilate marveled that this man would not defend himself, that he would not take his place, that he would not speak his peace. Now, it just so happens that Pilate comes to find out that, that Herod is in town and that, that Jesus began his ministry in Galilee. And so uh, Herod is the one who should be ruling because, uh, he's, uh, because Jesus is from Galilee. And so he sends Jesus down to, to uh, Herod. And, and Herod is anxious to see Jesus because, you know, he wanted to see some miracle or whatever. But Jesus does not respond to the questions of Herod again because Herod's conscience is sealed. He doesn't care about... Uh, uh, He's not going to change Herod's mind. And so he doesn't answer. And the chief priest and the Pharisees, they, they vehemently accuse him. Herod and his men mock Jesus and send him back to Pilate. See, Pilate thinks, if I can send him now to Herod, then Herod can be responsible and I'll be able to be out of this. They'll be, I won't be responsible. See, I'm going to, to try to... He, he's going to try to pass the buck to Herod, Herod, so to speak. And Herod says, huh, bud, this ain't my problem. This is yours. And he just sends Jesus back to Pilate again. Pilate and Herod becomes friends, another cultural influence that happens. They were enemies before. So Jesus is returned to Pilate, and the chief priests and the elders and the people are called again. Luke 23, 14 says this, you have brought this man unto me as one that perverted the people. And behold, I have examined him before you, have found no fault in this man, uh, uh, touching those things whereof you accuse him. No, no, nor yet Herod, for I sent him uh, you to him. And lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. I will therefore chastise him and release him. I'm going to let him go. The people say, no. See, Pilate wants to let him go because as we read earlier in verse number 18, Pilate was able to understand, listen, 
there's nothing wrong with this guy. The people have delivered him for envy. They just hate him. I don't know why they hate him, but they just want him put to death and they're not here for justice. They just want this man dead and they're going to try to get me to do it. He knew that was just envy that was in the heart of the Jews. <clears throat> so Pilate's going to scourge them. But the chief priest, it says, moved the people that he, would, that he should rather release Barabbas unto them. That's found in Mark 15, 5. Once again, the culture, the chief priests manipulate the culture of the Jews and manipulate the Jews to say, okay, we don't want Jesus. The one we just said, hell, uh, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. We're going to turn our backs on him. We want Barabbas, the insurrectionist, the murderer. We want him. It's during this time that wife, Pilate's wife comes and says, listen, don't have anything to do with this just man because I've suffered many things of him in a dream. You need to let him go. But Pilate comes again and questions Jesus. And this is a place in John 18 where it's a lot of text here. Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall and called Jesus and said unto him, art thou king of the Jews? Jesus answered and said, Thou sayest this thing of thyself, or did the others tell thee of it? Pilate answered and said, Am I a Jew, thy own nation, and the chief priest have a liberty unto me? What have you done? And Jesus said this. This is so important for us to remember. My kingdom is not of this world. The first time that Jesus came, he did not come to establish his kingdom. He came to seek and to save those that were lost. It's not about his kingdom yet. His kingdom is yet future. He says, if my kingdom was of this world, then my servants would fight and I would be delivered of the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from hence. Pilate therefore said, Art thou king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest I am a king. To this end was I born. And for this end I came into the world that I should bear witness of the truth. And everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Now, now listen. If you are of the truth, you hear the voice of Jesus. If you reject the voice of Jesus, that means you're not of the truth. If you do not receive Jesus, you're not of the truth. But Pilate says to him, what is truth? And when he had said this, he went out, went out of the Jews and he said, I find no fault in him. Pilate is called, caught in a culture that doesn't know the truth. The truth has been present. <coughs> the truth is in his very midst. <coughs> but his culture doesn't understand the truth. Kind of puts you in mind of our culture today, doesn't it? The truth's here. The truth is present. But how many are rejecting the truth? Truth is fallen in the streets. My people perish for a lack of knowledge of the truth. Do you want to know why our culture is in the condition that it's in today? Because of its rejection of the truth. Pilate, what is truth? And the truth standing in his very midst. You might be wondering about the truth of what's going on in the world today, but the truth is right in your midst. It may be sitting right in your very life. You're hearing the word of truth preached today in so many people. What is truth? Jesus is the truth. Amen. And so many reject it. G Pilate's going to come back to Jesus. He's going to bring Jesus before him the third time. This is the third time. Pilate wants to let him go, and he's trying every way. He, he, he wants to let Jesus go, but he comes back, and Luke 23, 22 says, and he said unto him the third time, why? What evil hath he done? I found no cause of death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. He's telling the Jews, I'm going to let him go. He's not done anything wrong. And they cry out, crucify him. And then I'm going to turn over to John 19. Listen to these words, verse 9. And went again in the judgment hall and saith unto Jesus, Whence art thou? But Jesus gave him no answer. Pilate wanted the information that he could feel confident in what he was doing and say, I'm going to let Jesus go. Then saith Pilate unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest thou not that I have power to crucify thee and have power to release thee? 
And another one of the powerful statements that Jesus gave to Pilate. Jesus answered, Thou didst have no power at all against me, except it were given thee from above. Therefore, he that hath delivered me unto thee hath the greater sin. Pilate thinks he has power to release Jesus, but he doesn't have the power. God's foreordained plans are allowing to Jesus to be there. Pilate doesn't have the power to release Jesus. Pat Pilate has come underneath the power of the culture. And he's going to deliver him up to be crucified. I wonder how many of you think that you're living your life according to your own free will, but actually you're being manipulated by the culture. The culture in which you live is causing you to make decisions that maybe really you don't want to make, but you're making them. You kind of know what the truth is, but you don't want to make a decision according to the truth. And so you want to make your own decisions and culture is manipulating you. Pilate's concern for the innocence of Jesus could not persuade him to release Jesus. This is a commentator said this, the sight of the unjust suffering so patiently born seems again to have troubled his conscience and prompted a new effort in favor of the victim. <coughs> Yet Pilate surrenders to the pressures of culture. Back in Matthew 27, 24 through 26, it tells us that Pilate washes his hands you see, he wants to justify it. It's like, look, this is not my decision. This is your decision. You're, this is what you guys want to do. I'm going to wash my hands of this matter. When you're caught by culture, you're going to try to find every way you can to justify your circumstances or remove yourself from a responsibility. It's my upbringing that caused me to be this way or it's where I live that causes me to be this way or there's some other reason that I'm who I am. I'm not responsible for my own actions. Everybody wanting to wash themselves of their own responsibility but yet, no matter how you may try to wash your hands, you cannot remove yourself from your own responsibility for your life. Every one of us are going to give an account of ourselves to God one day. No matter how you want to try to justify your actions, no matter how much you want to try to push the responsibility off to someone else, every one of us is going to give an account. And in this situation, Pilate is not innocent. The people accept their responsibility in Matthew 27, 25, when the people answered and said, His blood be upon us and our children. Again, they're caught in the cultural influences. I'm sure they do not understand that they are agreeing to murder their Messiah. Because the word says later on, they will look upon him whom they have pierced. And they'll say, Jesus. Jesus is condemned. Barabbas is released. And the cultural influences influence Pilate. And the people are going to see Jesus crucified. You see, cultural influences are present today. Are you caught in them? Today, the culture wants to claim that there's no need for salvation. Everybody's going to go to heaven when they die. Or there's no such thing as God. Or there's many ways to get to heaven, not just one. But just like the cultural influences were wrong in the day of Pilate, they're wrong today. Will you be persuaded by culture or will you seek truth? Jesus is the only way of salvation. He has a kingdom which is to come. But will you hear his voice today? Will you admit that you have rejected the truth and that you've been influenced by culture, not the truth? And will you see Jesus as the truth today and receive him as your Savior? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this opportunity we have to preach your word. And I pray that your Holy Spirit will use this word to challenge the hearts of people to think about are they influenced by culture or are they influenced by truth? And there's one here that doesn't know you today. I pray that they'll repent of their sins and come to trust Jesus Christ as their Savior. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and turn to page.